Well, the tarpon are starting to show up, so it's time to get ready for them. This video will be about live bait, finding it, and catching it. Okay, guys, the, uh, the areas that I'm going to target tarpon this year are primarily in these areas. Number one will be the Shark Key Channel right here, um, both the little channel and the outlet. Um, secondarily would be the flats around this section here. Uh, third will be on Key West uh, around the White Street Pier. Uh, fourth will be around the, the uh, Key West Harbor. And I've never actually fished for tarpon in the uh, backcountry, but I'll probably throw a bit of that in there this year. And then um, I'll probably include the uh, bridges up by uh, Big Pine in uh, that area there, uh, Bahia Honda. I really, as you can see by my videos, I, I really haven't done one that I don't like really doing the uh, the bridges. And I really don't like doing the uh, the harbor, to be honest with you. And that's strictly because of the boat traffic and then the, the heavy current. It, it just, um, it's pretty much dangerous. And that, for me, is just not very relaxing and fun, having to deal with that. I mean, the fishing is great, but it's just not fun. So um, I'll do it, but not very much but anyways like uh, my primary will be like the shark channel and the flats there so today what I wanted to do was to do some uh, bait recon and why that's important is I don't like buying bait and spending money on that when I can go ahead and catch it myself and I actually love the process of catching bait as almost as equal to actually catching the fish I use it for so for me it's kind of like hunting and, and that part of it and trying to figuring out and the challenge of it so um, that's the reason why I'm doing it. You could easily just walk into a bait store and plump down your credit card and get the same thing and be done in, in five minutes, but uh, for each their own. Um, since I'll be targeting kind of this area here, I went and hit a couple of spots. Um, primarily was the Geiger Key Creek or Geiger Creek. Uh, very good. Uh, I made that video as my favorite spot for windy days of paddling and fishing is the Geiger Creek so there's a video about that if you look that up um, slow calm waters there sandy sides so I get um, uh, blue crabs and I get mullet there um, I get mullet also on this little island here mullet and crabs basically as you'll see in the video anytime you find that real um, silty silty kind of sand not the white sand beaches that you might see in the backcountry or you're thinking of but more that kind of really super fine silty sink up to your uh, knees type of stuff and it's kind of mucky um, that's the kind that where I, I tend to find the uh, mullet and the uh, crabs um, I also will throw in uh, the uh, pinfish as well as um, uh, pilchards but I, I to show a little bit about those but I use those quite a bit in my other videos already so those will just be additions to my primaries and my primary baits and matter of importance are number one for me is mullet um, 10 to 12 inch large size mullet not the little finger ones that I caught in this video but in that 10 to 12 inch range larger just provides a big profile up on the top water because they're a top water bait and then with the uh, tarpons they're uh, uh, an upwards feeder they've got the mouth that opens up and the eyes that look up so what they look for is on the top of the water more or less and uh, with a larger mullet it gives that larger profile and uh, even though other baits available they'll stick out quite a bit uh, second for me is the crabs the blue crabs primarily um, if you can find larger pass crabs I do get those during the summertime just floating through the currents on the outgoing tide but primarily I use uh, blue crabs and I go out and show you how to find those. Um, and then pinfish and pilchards um, are comparatively third. Usually I don't go that far unless for there's some certain reason why I have to catch a tarpon. Um, I'll use those. But usually what it is, if I don't find the other two baits, then I spent the whole day looking for those baits and there's no other time to fish. So I don't even actually try. But anyways, uh, check out the video and I'll kind of give a narrative descriptions of where I'm at and what I'm doing on the rest of the videos. So anyways, check it out. Thanks. This is the uh, inlet to the Geiger Creek um, right at the, the opening or the outlet part of it. Uh, what I'm doing is just slowly entering through there. Um, 
I can see that uh, because of the exposed uh, sandy sides there that we're getting towards the bottom of the low tide. Um, so not the best time for the blue crabs, but uh, you tend to find at the openings a lot of uh, mullet are swimming around in that area because they run onto the flats as well and uh, hide back in those channels. Um, the other thing that kind of uh, coagulates in that area are the pilchards you'll see sometimes. In the deeper water they're harder to find, but on the edges you'll sometimes see them. Uh, similar to like I catch them a lot over on the shark channel they like that water outflow primarily because it's taking all the nutrients out to the flats and that's what they're feeding on this is uh, one of the bends in the creek and what it's done is that it's cut a little channel along one side but the far side it's pushed um, up all that silt and created a nice little beachy area of that kind of silty sand I was talking about and uh, that's a good spot where I usually will catch the uh, find the blue crabs as well as the mullet like to get up on top there and feed and flock and roll around. Uh, as I was sitting there just checking it out, I saw two schools of finger mullet come through, and then there was a couple of uh, more of the hog leg, uh, the big mullets that I like uh, coming through as well. So that's a good sign. Um, key part is I need to be able to catch this bait quickly, go right to the spot that's that's got some catch them and then get out and put the bait in the water. Here's another good uh, bait spot because of the sandy edges there. You can see how low the, the water is at the moment by the, the wet line there. And actually the water usually sits all the way up to the green areas up there on the top. So it's uh, quite a bit low right now, which is affecting um, both the blue crabs and the mullet. Um, but just a good spot to keep an eye out. Um, generally, I'll use a lot my larger net because of a little bit deeper water. But when the water's all the way up top there, then they're right along the edges, and I can get away with using my little five foot net. I'm back at the uh, outlet and there was a few schools of uh, mullet around but because it's so kind of wide open there they were pretty skittish and it was hard to get a line on them. Uh, but what happened is uh, as soon as I turned, turned the corner and got onto the flats there was a pelican in the water and I uh, just chugged around a little bit and there was a massive school of pilchards so I was able to throw on them and uh, pick up some decent sized pilchards uh, to add to the list. Here's a little small cut or a little bay that's uh, always good to check out, uh, especially these sandy ones. This small crab is about two inches wide and that is a perfect uh, permit uh, slash bonefish bait. Um, not Definitely not the size for a tarpon, but a uh, very good bait to use for those permits. So it would be nice to grab that and uh, work the flats. Now here's a perfect uh, tarpon sized uh, crab. Now the reason why I, I specifically look for these sandy spots is that they're virtually impossible to find on the grass flats or, or in the mangroves. So about the only time is you'll see them and you'll, you can catch them because there's a, a little a puff of mud trail that they'll create and you'll see just a, a little odd uh, rock looking thing sitting in the middle of the sand and then you'll start taking off as you get closer and then you know you've uh, you found a crab. The net I'm using to catch them is just a long handle net that I bought from Kmart and I modified it by using a um, finer mesh uh, generic bag um, so it has a lot smaller weave on it and just wound it on the wire uh, cone and then I bent it 90 degrees to the the pole so that I can actually kind of push down straight down over the crab uh, versus trying to scoop them up because they are pretty quick. I'm uh, throwing the net at some mullet. These are just little finger mullet, but there was probably hundreds of them in this little cove. Um, water's just kind of shallow and very clear, so I had to make some long distance casts to, to get any, but I picked up a couple of them. I did not see any of the, the larger hog leg ones, uh, so I'll have to 
keep an eye out for a better spot for that. But um, as we get closer to the, the, the full-on season of tarpon, these guys will grow up and be a little bit bigger, and, and that'll work out fine. One thing to remember is that if you go the route of a five gallon bucket or any type of uh, a bait tank, it has to have a lid. These guys just constantly are just jumping to escape and you have any opening and they'll be gone and you'll just never know it until you reach back there and there's nothing there. For pinfish, I just pulled this video from my uh, mangrove snapper video, but basically, uh, I use a basic a small little uh, fish finder rig which is a small egg sinker on your main line to a swivel 12 inches of uh, light mono to a little bluegill hook and then you can use a little piece of squid shrimp um, little cut off piece of gulp and just cast it out in a one foot to four foot uh, live green grass bottom and you're set and you want to look for three to five inch size pilcher, uh, pinfish.